In today's video, I have four really simple watercolour painting ideas for beginners. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel we do all things watercolour as well as lots of drawing tutorials, even a little bit of mixed media and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. It's completely free and unlike many other channels on YouTube, we are fully CAT approved. So in this video, I have four really simple, easy painting subjects for you, little studies that you can do if you're completely new to watercolor painting, or even if you're a more experienced artist, they can be sort of jumping off points for larger subjects, or you can use them for things like greetings cards and bookmarks. All of the ones I'm doing today are going to include masking fluid. And if some of you are sort of groaning and saying, oh, not masking fluid, it ruins everything I touch then let me assure you, and I mean this kindly, it's user error. I do have a video all about avoiding masking fluid mistakes. There's just a few basic things that people tend to do wrong that get them into trouble with masking fluid. And once you sort that out, you're going to find it a really useful tool. I'll also give you some little hints and tips about using masking fluid as we go through the video. So let's get started. For our first subject, we're going to do a couple of really pretty dandelion clocks. Now I'm working on a piece of stretched paper and I've divided it vertically with some tape. So I've got actually four long, thin, tall piece of paper to work on. Now, as I work, you may find if I'm on this second one here that you can see things next to it, either side appearing and maybe even disappearing because I don't always film concurrently. It's much quicker for me to move between them and allow things to dry. So what I'll do is I'll edit it so that we see the whole of one, then the whole of the next one. So don't worry about what you're seeing going on next to the one I'm working on because I promise you that's included in the video and you'll get to see it. So I'm going to start by putting some masking fluid out. I've got this schminky masking fluid and you always want to decant your masking fluid so I'm going to tip mine into this little ceramic dish. Now it would be easier for me to use a coloured masking fluid but I do find that they sometimes stain the paper. The one I've got, the blue one I've got does stain the paper which I don't want to happen but I'll explain what I'm doing and even if you can't see everything when I'm applying the fluid, you'll see all of it once the paint goes on because it will all become clear. We're going to start in this first section on this side here and we're going to do a couple of dandelion clocks. So I'm going to start just by doing a couple of stems and we want those stems to be quite wide. Take them a little bit narrower as they go in. Let's have one up near the top here. I also want to just place a mark for the centre of the dandelion clock so I know where to take it out from. And I'll do another one, I think, coming in from the base here like so. Now I'm going to start applying my masking fluid and just in case you can't see it very easily what I'm going to be doing is from that center point I'm going to be making lines coming out like this and putting little branches on the end of them like so. I'm going to do more towards the top area and less towards the base. I'm also going to put some in the middle here almost without the little stems because they would be facing towards us and that's how we're going to apply the masking fluid. There are lots of things you can apply masking fluid with. This is my favorite tool at the moment, and this is an embossing tool. It's got two different ends on, so I'll just get started, I think, and see how it applies. If I feel it's too thick, then I can use the thinner end. Start by taking those stems outwards and putting on the little branches on the end. And I'm not going to worry if it goes across that stem at the back. In fact, I think it will make things look even more interesting. So let's start painting our dandelions. I've got some green gold paint here and I'm going to take this up. I'm going to take it almost to the center of the flower because that's where it would go in reality. Keeping it really simple and keeping the color quite light because I'm going to do the background darker. It's really important before you paint any of your pictures today that the masking fluid is completely dry. Otherwise, it may come up on your paintbrush and that will ruin the bristles. So now the stems are dry, we can paint our background. I'm going to start by wetting around the head of the dandelion clock. I think I've got a little bit of blue paint on this brush. Doesn't matter at all. I'm going to get a little bit of dark in the center here. I've got some Mars Brown here. What you want to do with this is have quite thick paint. So dry your brush a bit if you need to, because we want a dark area in the center. 
and we don't want it to spread too far. I'll do the same with the other one at the same time. Keep the water off the stems as much as you can. We'll pop that dark in the middle. Now we're going to start the background. I'm going to start with some cerulean blue just to give an impression of them perhaps being some sky up the top here. Now remember your masking fluid will only show up if there's colour behind it. So you want to take that in like this. I'm going to come down with some brighter and darker greens and we're going to paint around the edge of the stem like this. Again, if something doesn't show up, you want to go darker. I'm going to stick to fairly natural colours coming down, being yellows and browns and greens. If you want to get a bit more drama in behind as well, you can drip some wet paint in. I've got some yellow ochre here just to give the impression perhaps of other flowers behind. I'm going to go a little darker at the top just to make it show up a bit more. You want to keep it dark towards the base of the picture. I'm putting some phthalo blue in here, but just to get some dark on the paper, I'm going to add some more of that brown in, which will push that towards neutral. If you add blue to brown, you'll get greys and darks. And again, being careful to come along the edge of the stem, maybe adding a few bits of dark higher up. Now, of course, we let everything dry. So I've removed the tape and um, I'm now removing the masking fluid. I've done the bottom one already. You can use an eraser like this. This is a little bit soft. A firm eraser would be better. I don't have one to hand. You can use your fingers. Make sure your hands are clean. And you can actually go across the top with an eraser just to make sure that everything's off. Now, my masking fluid is rather thick, so these have become rather thick lines. Could you go in with a paintbrush and, you know, add more to this? Absolutely, you could. I'd be inclined to add some little darker marks as well, some little fine lines. But you can see we've got a really nice effect here. At the end of the video, I'll put up a panorama so you can see all of the results in one go. For subject number three, we're going to do a very pretty, frosty, sparkly spider's web. Don't worry, there's no spider in this tutorial if they give you the ick. I personally love spiders, but we won't be putting one in this particular painting, so you're quite safe to proceed. At this point, can I ask you please quickly just to press the like button with your with your little paw? He bit me. He actually bit me. <laughs> He's not a very good YouTube cat, is he? Can I ask you please to press that like button to subscribe or leave a comment or share this video? It all helps my channel to grow on YouTube, enabling me to make more free videos for you and buy lots of cat food. So I found this amazing little picture when I was sorting out one of my filing cabinets the other day. And I've actually started a larger painting with a big spider's web on, but I thought, wouldn't that be a fantastic subject for a little practice piece like this? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the uh, with the main drawing areas. Now, I don't know where this photograph came from, so I can't provide this for you. But if you go onto um, any of the copyright free photograph websites that are online, you'll find probably a multitude of spiders webs to copy. So I'm just sort of going to think about where I want it to go. And this piece of paper is quite narrow. So I'm just going to change the shape of it a little bit and kind of tailor it to um, to where I see I want things and just start with those main areas there and have the center point about here and then I'll start taking these strands outwards. Once I've done all the outward strands and all the main strands then I'll start to put the smaller strands in. Let's have another one there I think like so. Sometimes it's also worth going into the first strands that you did and just adjusting them a little bit like that so that as you get a strand that comes round, it sort of pulls in that main strand a little bit. In this way, you'll get a natural looking effect. Here's my spider's web, really happy with the drawing. Now, all I'm going to do is just take the masking fluid literally over the top of the pencil. It doesn't matter if you go offline, any excess pencil will be removed at the end. When you erase the masking fluid, we can use an eraser to lift it off of the paper when it's dry and that will just lift the pencil out too. And don't be afraid, as I said, to put a few more curves in there. If you feel your pencil lines are a little bit on the straight side, I'm going to work from the top downwards. That stops me from leaning in my masking fluid, catching it with my sleeve or something like that. I'm also going to work sort of fairly methodically so that I don't miss any. Now, if you do miss any or you go offline, anything like that, 
really don't worry about it. There's always gaps in spiders webs, as you can see from this one here. If you ever spill your masking fluid, I'll make a great big blob. All you have to do is let it get completely dry and rub it off of the paper. What you don't want to do is mess around scrubbing at it or worse still putting something damp on it like a cloth because all you'll do is push it into the fibers of the paper. So if you make any mistakes, just leave them alone. You can either correct it with paint later on if perhaps the line has become too thick or like I said, if it's a huge mistake, just allow it to dry, peel it off and start again. So I really want to get some drama behind my, uh, my spider's web and I liked the dark green that was in the original picture. I just dropped a paint lid on the floor, by the way, and when I went down on my hands and knees to have a look under the big table, I couldn't see it for ages, but I did discover where all of Gimlet's toys had gone, so <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole collection under there. This is a colour that I actually designed for my shadow set of paints with Jackman's, and this is, it's like a really strong dark moss, so we're going to apply this at the top. I want to get sort of a really wintry kind of gothic -y look to this one. What I've also got got is um, I've got some violet colour with some shimmer in it. This is also by Jackman's, what's this called? Midnight Violet Shimmer. Now don't be surprised if you can't see the shimmer on camera at all. It never seems to show up. It's such a shame because it's so pretty and I'm going to let those two sort of bleed together like that. I think I'm also going to add in a little bit of phthalo blue here and then towards the bottom I'm going to go back to my green. I'm going to take this all the way down and just for a bit of added sparkle I'm going to drop some sea salt on and this is going to give us a few crystal shapes. We'll have one or two up the top as well and just to ensure those really show up I'm going to put some more blue and purple on and I'll be leaving this for a very long time to dry, possibly even overnight because the salt takes a long time to dry. Sometimes it looks dry, but the paint underneath it is still wet. But don't worry, by the magic of editing, you won't have to wait any time at all. Everything has dried on this one now. So not only do I need to remove the masking fluid, but I also need to brush off all of this salt into a dustbin. So a great result with this one and look at these beautiful crystal shapes that we've got here from the salt. I have another video all about how to do the salt technique and get the best from it. I'll leave a link to that one in the video description if you're interested in trying it yourself. For our next subject, let's do a moon with some very beautiful splattered stars. And why not? Because splattering is always fun. Now for my third picture, I'm going to do a moon and I'm going to draw round this little pot to get the shape of the moon. Something like a lid is a really good thing to use here. Anything that is the right size. But I'm not going to mask out this moon. We're going to use the masking fluid to make some lovely splattery stars. But I don't want to use masking fluid across this whole moon. And the reason for that is that masking fluid applied over large blocked in areas like that has a tendency to tear paper. And it's not actually designed for big things like this. So what I've done, just to make sure I don't splatter the stars across the moon, which is going to be light in the dark sky, I've also drawn another moon of the same size on just a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to place it over here. You can secure with a little piece of tape if necessary, but I don't think it will be. And I'm now going to get an old toothbrush to splatter the stars. And I'm also going to get some magazine paper to block off our other areas so that we only get those splatters in this panel. So I've covered up the area that I don't want to get the masking fluid splatter on. I've got my piece of paper covering the moon area. I've got a scruffy old toothbrush that has been previously used for masking fluid. All I'm going to do is dip in. You need to get your thumb and pull your thumbnail backwards and point downwards and that way the splatter will go forwards. If you have arthritis or you just physically find this movement difficult, you can just use a flat blade, you know, a blunt kitchen knife and just drag that backwards. So we're going to splatter here and I want to get almost an idea of sort of a galaxy of stars and a few lower down as well. But I want to get this idea of them coming across the moon like so. So I'm going to concentrate particularly in that area. 
Now, it was all very underwhelming at the moment, but once we put the paint on, it's going to look lovely. But before we do that, we're going to paint the moon. And before we do that, we're going to allow the masking fluid to dry. We can just now remove this little moon. Oh, and one other tip, make sure you get this straight in some water and give it a rinse. It never all comes out, but otherwise you'll have so much left on there that you'll never be able to use that toothbrush again. Before we paint our galaxy, I'm going to put some colour on the moon. I've got some cerulean blue here. It came out of a tube and the tube split, so I just decanted it into this little pot. I've been using it for about two years. Will I ever get through it all? I want my moon to be fairly light. I'm choosing a granular colour here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little pink, which is some permanent rose, and a little yellow. And what I'll do then is I'll mix these together. Putting these other primaries in will push this more towards a greyish colour. And I'm going to blot with some kitchen paper, adding a bit more pink and a bit more yellow. You see, if I just put yellow on, it goes green. But if we balance out with a bit of pink, we just start getting those neutrals. And I'm just going to keep working this with plenty of water, staying within that outside line and just blotting and adjusting colours so that we get sort of a pale mottled effect. You can play around with this. You can have it more grey, more yellow, whatever you like. Don't worry too much if you go a little bit outside of your circle. You'll be able to tidy that up when we put the dark sky in behind. Finally, I'm just going to put a little more blue in. Let's have a little lilac in as well. Just allow it to sit a little bit unevenly like this so that we get some nice texture on our moon. Let's start painting around our moon. I've got some ultramarine deep here, which is going to be a very beautiful, strong, dark colour. I can also use some Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is a very deep, dark, staining colour. All greys are majority blue pigment, but Payne's Grey is especially blue, which makes it fantastic for subjects like this. So I can add it to my ultramarine here, and just blend them together. And can you see all of those tiny stars appearing? You want to avoid letting any area like this get dry, so keep the paint moving as you come down. See how the brush sweeps around the moon. Try not to jab towards it. So this one's really easy to paint, but just for a bit of interest, I am going to add some pink. So I've got some permanent rose here, and we'll just add a bit towards the base here, and perhaps a bit of yellow ochre. We can imagine the remains of a sunset, and that's all you need to do before we let it dry. Now, as this one is drying, I'm finding it's going a little light around the moon. So I'm actually going to go in with some more ultramarine. Normally, I'd wait until it was bone dry, but I don't mind if it runs a little bit. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to just take almost like, can't really call it a cloud, but almost like a little galaxy across there. I'm going to go in sort of a diagonal shape here just to ensure I get enough drama around the moon. So I've taken the masking fluid off. I used an eraser for this one. Be aware that even dry paint can smudge, so try not to go in to your moon and then you'll get a lovely clean effect like this. For painting number four, we're going to do some really cool mono printing. So absolutely no drawing whatsoever in this one. We're going to get some fantastic, unpredictable, but pretty results. What's this? Have we turned into a cooking channel, 1000 Vegan Meals? No, we have not. I used this book to press some leaf skeletons yesterday. Now, it's not that they need to be pressed. It's just that because I was keeping them overnight, I didn't want them to sort of curl up. In fact, you don't want pressed leaves particularly. I was just using the book, as I said, just to keep them flat overnight. So let's see how they are looking. Now, 1,000 vegan recipes. How many do you think I've made from this book? Uh, the answer would be zero because like everybody else, I just keep cookery books and look everything up online. So I found a couple of leaves. But what I really went out there for were these hydrangea heads like this. Aren't they beautiful? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make impressions with these. So I'll get my board back and let me show you how we do it. Like I said, you don't particularly want things that have been pressed 
for months so they're brittle. You can in fact use stuff that's fresh out of the garden. In the summer I sometimes use little ferns. What you're looking for really is something that's not completely flat and blocked in because it doesn't tend to give a very good effect. You want something that's got either a sort of a frilly edge, so fronds and ferns are great, or leaf skeletons like this, equally lovely. Let me get my board back and I'll show you how it works. So we're going to put masking fluid on this and we're going to make an impression. And we need to be quick because it dries fast. What we don't want is so much masking fluid on this that it ends up being kind of um, completely blocked in. You can experiment with dipping in. You can also use a very old brush and you know paint on there. I'm gonna have a go at dipping first of all. We'll see how this works. I haven't done this for a while. Like I said, be careful if it sort of fills in all the gaps like that, because you may find that, um, you know, you don't leave much of a visible impression, just a shape, although that can be nice as well. So I'm going to mess around with this. I've got some paper towel here as well, which we're going to need some of in a moment. So I'm just going to brush some of this off. And there you can see I've got a good amount on there, but there are some gaps. I'm going to place it quickly onto my paper, get another piece of paper towel and it. Now we're going to lift it off nice and quickly before it dries. If you get any bits of leaf adhering to your paper, just leave them alone. You can pick them off later. And I can see I've made a bit of an impression here. I'm going to do a couple more and maybe one or two of the big leaves down the bottom. So a little bit of paint worked its way across from the picture next to it, but we're not going to worry at all about that. So this is our imprint section. And um, I, I really can't see very easily how it's worked out. I certainly can see that masking fluid is on the paper. So let's just play around with it and have some fun. I've got this pink shimmer here. So I think you can see how shimmery it is. As I said, these shimmer paints never seem to, um, to show on camera. This is rose gold. I've also still got a bit of blue on my brush. So we're going to try and get those kind of hydrangea colors so it's a very pale color so I'll pop some of that on then I think we'll go in with some cerulean once we start to get more darks on we should be able to just see what's happening here I'm going to go for some brighter pink as well and let's just see what we can get appearing so aiming these pinks vaguely at where the uh, where the flowers were and there are actually some beautiful colours appearing. I've got some green gold left in my palette, so I'm going to pop a little bit of that on as well. And some Mars Brown. Down the bottom here, I did a leaf imprint. And I think it's shown up quite well, actually. Let's go for a little bit of green as well. Now, remember what I said. Wherever you find you can't see the masking fluid very much, just go darker in those areas. Now, when green meets pink, we're going to get these very muted brownish shades that are very reminiscent of those autumn dried hydrangea petals. Adding a little bit of cerulean here just for texture and for darkness. No need to overthink it and look what a beautiful result we have. Now, of course, I need to allow it to dry before removing the masking fluid. Now I've removed the masking fluid from this one. Everything was dry and I really couldn't be happier with this. I think actually this is my favorite one. I'm about to do a larger painting using the uh, the spider's web idea. And I wasn't sure what to do in the bottom part of the painting because it's a portrait shaped painting. And do you know what? I think I'm going to do some of this. I think it's really going to complement everything. I'm not doing a full tutorial of that painting, but I was thinking about doing a video just with some tips and uh, methods that I've used to create that larger painting. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Do let me know in the comments which one of these subjects you like the best and if you're going to give any of them a go yourself. Let me know as well if you'd like any more videos like this of quick painting subjects and indeed anything else that you would like to see on this channel. And before you leave this video, don't forget to check that video description. I do have any videos that I spoke about within this video linked down there. You can also find a list of the materials and colors I used and you can grab some free stuff. You can grab some free downloadable PDFs. There's even some free courses that you can take. And if you enjoyed this video, you'd like to take your masking fluid skills up a notch. I have a video all about some really interesting techniques that you can do with masking fluid. You can watch that video right now.